you edit a lot of sunrise or sunset photos or have even watched a lot of YouTube tutorials on how to edit in Lightroom, you've probably fallen into the trap of raise the shadows and lower the highlights. It's a fairly standard adjustment to make, but it's not always the right one. In the basic tab, there are all these sliders for shadows, highlights, blacks, and whites, and sometimes it's not always clear which of these sliders you should be editing. So it's easy to understand that sometimes we just fall back on what's a standard adjustment that we've used in the past that will seem to work on a majority of our photos. But what if I told you there's a better way to make these adjustments that could potentially get you better results. You'd probably be interested, right? A quick tip that I like to use, and it's actually staring you right in the face inside of the develop tab is the histogram. But a lot of editors actually overlook this feature because it sometimes seems too complicated or it's not always the easiest to understand. With this photo, for example, it would seem that it's underexposed, but looking at the histogram, it's actually relatively well balanced because I don't have any blown out highlights. I have maybe just a little bit of peaking in there. I might be tempted to just go, oh, let's raise the shadows and lower the highlights, and immediately you can see that the result is kind of terrible. So I've actually undone that adjustment, and instead I'm gonna to go to the histogram, and you'll see that as I hover my mouse over different portions of it, it actually highlights the area of the image that I'm editing. So for example, right in the middle where the midtones are, it's saying exposure. If I go to the left, it's saying shadows, and if I go to the left one more time, it's saying blacks. On the other side, I've got highlights and whites. So right off the bat, you can see that my cursor looks different. And if I click and drag on the histogram, it's actually adjusting those sliders that we were looking at before. So instead of guessing which of those sliders to edit, I can come right up here, use my histogram as a visual feedback and start making an educated guess as to which portions of my image that I need to edit. So in this case, I think starting with an exposure adjustment works pretty well, but then you can see uh, I've got a little bit too much in the highlights right in the center of the image. It looks way too bright. So if I take that and then drag that back down, maybe look at my shadows and say, okay, you know, there's too much concentrated on the shadows. I want to be able to edit that and bring colors out of that. So I'm actually going to grab those shadows or those, those blacks and move them into the shadows so that the image is looking kind of more neutral and more even all the way across. So as you can see with this sunset picture, which before was very contrasted, very dark and like peaks of white is now looking way more even and I have way more editing potential when and I jump into the other portions of the develop module. By comparison, the edits that I'm making here with just shifting those whites and the black look way more natural than the changes I was getting earlier where I shifted both my highlights and my shadows. Looking at this image, it looks way more like a flat picture profile, which I can then go in, make adjustments for vibrance, for saturation. I can you know, tweak my clarity and my texture as I see fit. And of course, I can still edit the shadows and the highlights. It's just that now I'm doing it from a point that is a lot more editable from a Lightroom perspective. Obviously this effect is gonna vary depending on the individual image that you're dealing with, but next time you go and try Lightroom edit, consider using the histogram to make your basic adjustments instead of always relying on those sliders. Let me know how it turns out.